Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we have a very exciting topic to discuss and the topic is micropropagation. Micropropagation is a revolutionary technique in the field of plant biotechnology. And in this lecture, we will be talking about the different steps involved in this method, along with the advantages and disadvantages linked with it. And also we will understand the procedure in detail. So let's start with it. So basically, micropropagation is a technique which is also known as plant tissue culture. And this is a method to propagate plants under sterile conditions. Now, what is the meaning of sterile conditions? This means aseptic conditions. Aseptic conditions means that there is an absence of microorganisms. So this technique, micropropagation, has to take place under aseptic condition. Even a slight bit of contamination or presence of microorganisms can lead to the failure of this technique. So how do we perform this micropropagation technique? For that, first we need to understand that what exactly it means. So micropropagation is the technique of production of a large number of genetically identical plants from the parent plant by using a small part of the parent plant. Let me explain it in other words. So basically, let's suppose that this is a plant and you want to propagate it for producing a number of copies that are similar to it. In fact, identical. That is, it should be genetically identical to this parent plant. So what we do in this technique, we take a small part of this parent plant and the small part can be anything. It can be the leaf, the node, the shoot, the bud, the root, anything. And that small part we refer to as the explant. Now this explant is followed by a certain procedure of the micropropagation. And after a set period of time, we obtain a number of plants which will have the same genetic, uh, genetical identity as to the parent plant. Now this whole technique is known as the micropropagation. So in other words, it is a technique to propagate plants under sterile conditions. And this technique is responsible for the production of a large number of genetically identical plants from the single source. And this technique is being profoundly used in the field of agriculture, horticulture, and many more. Now this technique is involving a sexual method of propagation. And this is primarily used for the crop improvement. And all these plants which are being propagated from the parent plant by the use of micropropagation are the clones. And what is a clone? Clone is basically used to represent a plant that is derived from a single individual and has the same identity as the parent plant. So that's why this technique is known as micropropagation and this is an in vitro condition. What do you mean by in vitro conditions? It means that the micropropagation technique is performed in the in vitro conditions, which is in the glass, that is in the test tubes. So that is what micropropagation means. Now, let us just move ahead and talk about the different steps that are involved in this technique. So there are total five stages that are in the micropropagation. So in some of the books, you might read it as four. In some books, you'll have an extra stage zero. It just depends on the way it has been classified. But the steps are going to be the same. So the stage zero, the stage one, the stage two, three, and four. So stage one is basically the stage that involves the selection of the mother plant and its maintenance. So in this stage, we basically first identify the plant which we want to propagate. And we also finalize the explant that we will be using in order to propagate that plant and produce the clones. So in this stage, the process begins by preparing the explant from the mother plant. And then we decide that we want to use the shoot tips, we want to use the nodal segments or the meristems or the roots or the buds or anything. So we just decide that here in the stage zero. Next comes the stage one. In the stage one, we establish the culture by initiating the culture. 
here the explants are placed on a sterile medium why we use the sterile medium in order to eliminate any kind of contamination as i previously mentioned that if there will be any kind of contamination the growth will be hampered and the result will not be there so the aseptic er conditions are very very important for the success of tissue culture next is the development of shoots so basically in the stage 2 there will be the shoot development and these shoots will multiply in the stage 3 these shoots that have been developed on the sterile culture they will start to form roots also after the roots have been formed now the plantlet has been formed which has roots and shoots both when the plantlet has been formed with the roots and the shoots this plant is transferred to sterile soil for the hardening process now what is this hardening process that we will discuss in the coming slides so let's just try to understand these stages from this figure so let's suppose that you took this explant in the first figure you see that this is a glass jar in vitro condition and you have this um agar like uh, thing present in the glass so basically this is a sterile medium the most commonly used medium in the plant tissue culture is known as the ms medium so ms medium we place the explant on that and then after several weeks you will observe that shoots have started to develop on this now why these shoots are developing because we had given cytokinin hormone treatment to this medium initially so cytokinin is basically responsible for the development of shoots in this process then we give the auxin treatment for the induction of roots so these shoots they start to develop some roots after several weeks and finally when a plantlet has been formed that they are transferred to the sterile soil and are underwent through a process called hardening and also that is known as acclimatization so now we will see in the next slide that what i actually mean so using this figure so let's suppose that this is the explant you take the tissue sample and then you place it in the agar plate which has all the nutrients necessary for the plant to grow so basically what happens in reality there is a soil there is a field where you grow the plants so we are trying to mimic those conditions all the nutrients that the plant takes up from the soil for the growth we try to incorporate all those nutrients in an artificial medium in an artificial condition under in vitro conditions and we try to grow that plant in the lab so that it is healthy and also so that it produces a lot of healthy clones now when the plant has been explant has been placed on the nutrient medium it starts to develop tiny plantlets from that these plantlets are finally transferred to the soil as i mentioned for the hardening process now let's move forward so using this figure we are going to sum up the whole process in detail so first we take the explant now we take a culture medium and i told you that the most commonly used one is the ms medium so this is an artificial medium which has all the components all the nutrients like micronutrients macronutrients the hormones and all the other things which are important for the growth of the plant we add everything in this medium and once it solidifies we place the explant on that then after several weeks we will observe that there is a formation of shoots from the plant plant uh, from the small explant that we had placed on the artificial medium now after the development of these shoots the roots start to develop so these roots they are induced by the auxin application and also you must remember that the shoot formation is induced by the cytokinin application so after there is the development of roots and shoots the plantlet is developed now these are transferred into the sterile soil 
Now, when they are transferred into sterile soil, we are making sure that the plant is now adapting to the natural conditions because you cannot grow a full healthy and a uh, adult plant in the laboratory itself. You can just do the laboratory procedure up till a certain stage. Eventually, you will have to transfer the plant to the natural conditions so that it can fully grow and produce uh, the final products. So now, first, you try to acclimatize it. Basically, you want to make the plant used to the natural conditions. So in this acclimatization stage, when the plant is planted into the sterile soil, a lot of different types of conditions are applied to the plant. For example, there will be an alternate alteration in the oxygen content, the carbon dioxide content, or maybe the humidity levels can be altered. There can be uh, certain times where the plant is exposed to rain kind of condition, drought kind of condition. Basically, all these conditions are the conditions that a plant usually faces in the natural environment. So when the plant is being exposed to these artificially induced conditions in a greenhouse, it is being hardened, it is being acclimatized, it's getting used to the natural environment so that it can survive actually in the real field. So once the acclimatization process is done, many of the plants might not be able to survive in those conditions and those are eliminated. The ones that survive those conditions are found to be fit to be transplanted into the field. And finally, they are transplanted into the field and those plants then grow into the adult plant and finally produce the desirable products. Now coming to the advantages of this technique, why is there a need of the micropropagation? So basically in a relatively very short time and space, a large number of prompts can be produced. So this is a very advantageous technique uh, because this specific procedure is season independent. We do not have to look for the winter conditions or the summer conditions for the specific plants to grow. We can grow any plant in any season so we can have the produce all year round. So the plant that are produced is, are true to type plants. So we are 100% sure in this technique that whatever the plants are being produced, they are identical to the mother plant. So for example, if you have a plant which is very healthy and is giving very nice produce, you can perform micropropagation on it in order to have the desirable products in more amounts. So any kind of desirable plant can be produced. And also this is a very, very important technique in preserving the rare plant species. And the plants that have non-viable seeds, which are very difficult to propagate, they can be propagated very easily. And this is being observed in a lot of crops. When there are certain advantages, there are definitely some limitations to that technique as well. So the first and foremost is that the production cost is high. Even though the production cost is high, all in all, at the end, when the produce is successfully done, when the micropropagation technique is successfully done, there is a profit for sure. Also, in labor-intensive countries, like the First Nations, uh, the cost of production is very high because the labor charge, is con it constitutes about 60 to 70% of the total cost. Also, there is one more important limitation that undesirable traits can occur if the propagation is left for a longer period of time. So if you leave the plant under the uh, in vitro conditions for a very long period of time, there is a high possibility that there might be some soma clonal variations that can occur and that may lead to some kind of genetic variation in the plant. So we need to make sure that we are looking into that fact, those factors very carefully. And also this one, which I discussed in the primary uh, slides only, that there can be some chemical and bacterial contamination. So we have to make sure that at all times, the process is free from any kind of contamination. There is no microbial growth happening there. There is no contamination with the other chemicals because that can lead to the hampering of the process. So that was all about the micropropagation technique. As we look ahead, the future of micropropagation holds 
exciting possibilities. So there's a lot of advanta uh, advancement going on in the field of technology. So this technique is definitely a very good one for the agriculture and environmental con conservation. So in conclusion, I would like to say that micropropagation is a powerful tool in the biotechnology uh, field. So this needs to be explored even further to have the best possible outcomes. Thank you for joining me on this exploration. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'll be posting more videos soon. Stay curious and I'll see you in the next lecture.